Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about very important and crucial topic, which is set up Power Platform governance. So, in this video, I am going to show you what are the best practices, strategies, some guidance in uh, adopting Power Platform, and once you have adopted it, then what are the governance factors and governance features you should always consider in your Power Platform environment. So please stay tuned till the end of this video because at the end of the video I am going to share a very latest architect information, architecture information in Power Platform which has been released in this month only which is March 2024. So stay tuned till the end of this video. All the links which I am going to showcase in this video I will share it in the comment section of this video. So let's get started. First of all, when uh, you think of governance in Power Platform, the first thing first, getting ready. So for getting ready, uh, the recommendation here is that you install the COE Starter Kit. Now, what is a COE Starter Kit? COE Starter Kit is Center of Excellence Starter Kit. It's a collection of components and tools that are designed to help you get started with the strategy for adopting and supporting the Power Platform. And when I'm going through this video, be, being you are a developer or you are an architect or maybe you are a Power Platform admin, don't think based on the role, this is my request, because this Power Platform governance will be helpful across all the roles, across all the designation. So in my belief, in my opinion, this Power Platform governance topics and the strategies should be understood, very well understood, irrespective of the role if you are working in Power Platform. The second step in getting ready is analyze your current Power Platform inventory. So you can use COE Starter Kit Power BI dashboards to get an idea of the current landscape of your Power Platform. These are the some important links on each slide of this presentation. You will see that uh, there will be some important links and I will be sharing these important links in the comment section of this video. Let's go to the next strategy, which is environment strategy. Now, when we talk about environment, there are multiple strategy in your environment, which you should consider as a developer, as an architect or as an admin, because here we are talking about power platform governance. So first and foremost is define the create criteria for creating the environment. So how many environments you need in your uh, complete framework or power platform, whether it's a dev environment, test environment, prod environment, it depends on the business needs, security and other parameters. Decide administrators for each environment. This is the second step. So once you have decided the environment, second step is you have to define the administrator for each environment. Process to request new environment. Then how the other users can request for the creation of the new environment. So you can utilize the COE starter kit again, where we talk about environment management process. Then a strategy for managing teams environment. You can utilize COE starter kit teams governance process. Then you have to set up capacity soft limit for each environment. Again, you can use COE starter kit capacity management process. So we have talked about the getting start started strategy, the environment strategy. Now we will talk about some other strategy when we talk about the power platform governance, which is again very important topic, which is DLP, data loss prevention policies. So you have to decide based on the connectors which should be enabled or disabled in your environment. For that, you can definitely create the policies because there are hundreds of connectors in Power Platform which are available, which may or might you don't want to include in your environment, which you don't want your citizen developers or the pro developers. They can use it. So definitely you can define the DLP policies over there based on the connectors. You can define the default connections for the newly created environments. You can have a process to update the existing DLP policies. For that, again, you can use the COE starter kit and you can process, you can have a process to request a new connector to be the part of the policy. So these are some important factors which you always consider when we talk about DLP policy. Again, this should be known by the developers, by the architect, and especially by the Power Platform admins who are managing the Power Platform environment. Now, the most important topic is security. So when it comes to security, you have to define many uh, governance parameters and governance factors here. First and foremost is cross-tenant isolation, conditional access policies, 
controlling the environment creation because it should not uh, be the thing like anyone can create any environment you should have some restriction on the environment creations which could be restricted only uh, which could be only applicable to the admins of the power platform that they can create the environments and then you should have the security groups i will create a separate uh, video altogether on the security security with respect to data wars altogether but at this point of time in this video i can talk about that you should use business units you should use organizations business unit teams uh, user roles and security groups to control your environment access so we have talked about getting ready we have talked about environment strategy we talked about dlp policy security and now we will talk about the license management now uh, you have to decide on the license management to kick start your power platform adoption because every product in power platform comes with its own licenses be it power app licenses power automate licenses power bi licenses and so on so you have to define a process a license requirement strategy while dealing with license management and then you have to define a process for the users to request a new license because for example in your app you might have used power bi and but might be the users the end users are not able to use it because of the license issues so you have to define a process or strategy for the users that how they can request a new license so this is related to the license management next is app and flow management so you create multiple apps you create multiple flows in power automate so definitely there should be some policies related to those as well so what you can do is you can set up the app compliance process you can set up the inactive app or flow management process you can set up the orphaned app flow management process because many a times it has been seen that the citizen developers or maybe the pro developers might be sometimes they create some apps for testing and that remains inactive or orphaned for many months or years in that case you should set up a policy a compliance policy a process for inactive apps inactive flows orphaned apps and orphaned flows so this was related to the app and flow management another very important thing is alm application life cycle management so you should define your application life cycle management strategy i can understand that if you are very new let's say for example in power platform you have recently adopted it that definitely you might be going ahead with a manual deployment process or a manual alm process but ideally going forward and in the long run you should implement ci cd which is continuous integration continuous deployment using pipelines which are available in power platform so this is the part of application life cycle management strategy next is monitoring and analytics so monitor your platform on a regular basis as a power platform admin to make sure nothing is going beyond as expected and you should do auditing you, you can definitely leverage uh, center of excellence uh, power bi dashboards for doing the auditing and monitoring of your platform altogether so that's all in this video now i'm going to show you let, let's see the coe starter kit uh, i will show you the official documentation of microsoft where uh, you can see many things which are available with respect to the overview admin how you can uh, manage the governance how you can nurture accelerate your adoption by thriving a community of makers so all these things are available in this official documentation it's very good read i will say please go through it which talks about coe starter kit in detail apart from that on the left navigation you can see here that coe starter kit is one part of it when we talk about the governance but there there are other things which you, i would like to showcase also which is alm accelerator so power platform x alm accelerator i would recommend again go through this it's a very good read to understand about the alm in power platform at the same time there is something called creator kit so creator kit is having some controls which are based on fluent ui the modern controls or the latest control you have to install the creator kit first of all in your environment it is a creator kit core solution a zip file which you will get you you, you can download it and install it in your environment at the same time there are some specific optional solutions specific for model driven and canvas app you can also install them you will get the fluent ui theme designer fluent ui reference app once you install the creator kit once you install the creator kit this is from the power at power cat team from microsoft you will definitely get multiple controls for example maybe the uh, details list control which is kind of a grid control so all these controls are available in the creator kit again a very good kit i will say to use 
at the same time there are some real world architecture architecture examples definitely you should go through it express route and power platform now what is express route express route is something uh, it's as your service as your express route i will say which allows you to connect your local on premise network to the microsoft cloud services so definitely you should uh, have a look if you are a architect power platform architect solution architect power platform solution architect or maybe you are a power platform admin so i recommend all these things you should go through read it uh, in the official documentation of microsoft so that's all till here in this video where we talked about the governance policies adoption nurture uh, admin related stuff which you should always focus while working with power platform however i want to show you the last part of this video one more thing which has recently been introduced as i mentioned in the start of the video which is power platform well architected so power platform well architected is a set of guiding principles architecture strategies and review tools to help you make informed decision about the designing planning implementation of your modern applications in power platform so there are some four pillars which they have defined in uh, power platform well architected those pillars are reliability security optional uh, operational excellence and experience optimization you can go through each of these i will definitely suggest you and recommend you that please go through it however if i talk about the power platform well architected in detail so it is again as i said built on four pillars which is reliable reliability security operational excellence and experience opti uh, optimization however you see here who who could be the audience whether you are a developer whether you are a architect whether you are a maker a citizen developer business stakeholder since if you have the authority to make decisions within the scope of the workload you can definitely you should use these guidance which is power platform well architected and the goals of this power platform well architected is that you can achieve the success with the development of your modern application be it related to design be it related to trade offs optimizations you should have the confidence in your outcomes and you can improve over the time so these are main some goals with respect to the power platform well architected i will definitely recommend you that please go through it this is very recently introduced by microsoft and this is of just first version there would be more improvements over it for sure but as a good read pre read and as a power platform developer maker solution architect or admin this is i will say a must read for all of us so that's all in this video thank you for watching